Hey friends, this is a brand new adventure for me. And uh, undercurrents is something that has been in my heart and in my head for who knows how long, but definitely longer than I've had the name and kind of sat on the idea, started having some of the conversations. And I started a personal podcast years ago and ran it for about a hundred episodes. I interviewed creatives and leaders and then got some editing jobs. Eventually ended up in a place where I was interviewing authors for a, a podcast called Author Hour. I, I still am doing B2B growth where I interview business leaders in the marketing space. I've recorded hundreds and hundreds of episodes. Everything looks so simple when you're far away from it. And then you get into it and you go like, oh, it's complicated. It's hard. It, to have compelling conversations consistently, to ask the right question, to not feel a ton of imposter syndrome. Like there's just so many things. And I look at Benji from a few years ago when I'm starting my own podcast for the first time, had never hit record before. I remember I tore my Achilles playing basketball and I had a bunch of time and I was just sitting on the couch. And I was like, how can I kind of grow and learn in this season. And so I took my crutches and I hopped into my closet and I put, I had my Mac balancing on a, a hamper basket and I hit record. I started interviewing people audio only, literally sitting on the floor of my closet because I was just so excited about the medium. And with time, I became so aware of man, there's people that can do this better than me. There's so much marketing promo, all this stuff that I'm not doing that I should or could be doing. And I just, once that podcast wrapped up and I started doing this full time for businesses, I hit pause on the personal side of things. Everyone has the thing that they want to do, that they want to push start on, but they keep putting off. And for me, it's been undercurrents and I care about the heart and I care about the why, and I care about personal evolution and transformation. And I think a lot of the world is super shiny. And then you get like a layer deep behind that shine and what we're advertising ourselves to be. And it's like, there's just a, a bunch of mess and there's a bunch of stuff that's worth talking about that it seems like we're not talking about. And I remember getting mad in an art class one time when I was a kid because kings and queens and people of power, they would have someone paint them and they would pay the artist to be skinny or they'd be better looking. And I was like, man, they're so stupid. Like, why would they do that? And then I'm going, oh no, I do that all the damn time. Like how often am I promoting a version of myself or doing something that is so inaccurate to how I actually feel? That's how undercurrents is born is because I think there's a lot of stuff we have to talk about that we aren't talking about that we need to be talking about the thing behind the thing. And, uh, I have a lot of questions. The last three years for me have been years that have left me scratching my head and have caused me to go, okay, I, I thought I knew stuff and I know a lot less. And it's actually really beautiful to admit that, you know, far less than you thought you knew. And it puts you in this weird space where it's like, okay, I don't quite know who I am anymore, but that also makes my life moldable again. And it allows for personal evolution. And so I want to appreciate this space that I'm coming from, but it's a, it's a tender one. It's one that's not complete. It feels like, uh, is this, is this the right time to say anything? But I've waited really three years and just going, okay, you know, am I ever going to jump in? You imagine someone kind of going to jump in uh, a jump rope situation, right? Like at recess, you'd have the two kids that are like swinging the rope and you're supposed to figure out when to jump in. And we all know there's just not a perfect time. So this is as perfect a time for me to launch this as there will ever be. I want to read some, some things that I wrote down and I'm just going to start by rattling off a bunch of questions. You're probably not going to have a ton of time to ponder each one of these, and that's okay. This will give you a sense of what I hope to talk about on this podcast moving forward. Here's what I wrote down. I wrote, is pain the only way that we grow? How are values and beliefs different from each other? When we go through something like an identity crisis how do we do the work to start to rebuild? Can we evolve our thinking and keep the same friend circle? What does intentional living look like? 
are values and virtues that were taught when we're kids still relevant today? And if so, how? I've been thinking about that one quite a bit because when we're kids, all the books, all the stuff that we like those lessons on integrity and humility and sharing and they apply so much as adults. They're the undercurrents of like what our, we hope our society would be about, our churches would be about, um, our, our personal lives would be about, our marriages and relationships would be about. Yet how often are they just taken for granted or stepped over? Like, and uh, so how do we make them still relevant? This, again, my ADHD wrote this list of questions, but this is the stuff I want to explore. So you're going to see some pivots in my questions here. Another one, how does physical fitness impact mental health and emotions? What do different world religions have in common? And what can we actively try to learn from each other? What connects us? Why so often is there an obsession with us versus them and drawing those lines? What does it look like to live a life where we're actively trying to step out in courage? What mental models do we live from subconsciously that we're unaware of? How do we try to actively become conscious of those things and then subscribe to better, healthier, newer, whatever, more helpful ones, right? A few more. Will we ever focus less on getting attention and more on paying attention? What does it look like to be here, be fully present. How do we practice that? Why do we get really bent out of shape? So often, like start to argue and fight and going back to the, what I said before, draw lines over things that are invisible and ultimately unknowable. Three more. How do we be more kind? How do we live fulfilled? And how do we keep our head up even when this stuff is happening, right? How do we not just put on a, a good face, get that, that shininess going that I talked about at the beginning, but instead come in with this, Hey, here's, here's me. And, uh, those are my questions. So it's not an exhaustive list, but that's kind of the birthplace of, of this podcast. I want to tell you three quick stories I, for as long as I can remember, I've been a why guy and my parents would have said that of me as a kid. Like if I'm, if I have homework in middle school and they can't explain when the last time in their adult life that they did that type of math was, it was really hard for me to want to complete that homework because they're not using it. So I probably won't need it in my future. Right. I constantly liked to ask why, and I'm going to bring that into this podcast because I, I'm coming from this place and you're going to hear more of my story. So I won't go into it in this, this episode. I just, I have this raw sense of asking why again, where I, over time, some things in my head and in my heart were just like totally solidified. Like, no, that's actually what's true. And like, I might not have said it that way, but that's how I felt. And that's how I operated. And coming back to this space of just being like, okay, there's more that you don't know than that, you know, and so be okay with standing in the why gap and, uh, going layers deep there. The other thing that I want to say is I'm pretty slow to a lot of things. And what I mean there is uh, I have a very distinctive memory of being at this resort with my family when, again, when, a, a story of young Benji here, but my sister was like running up, going down this water slide into the pool. There's other kids at the pool. They're doing the same thing. And, uh, I would climb up the stairs. It wasn't even really a tall slide at all, but I would I would get to the top and I would either sit there or stand there. It just wouldn't go down and I'd keep waiting and maybe even kids are passing me, I'm imagining, right? And eventually uh I'm I I sit there and then I'm like, okay, I'm 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 gonna do this. And so I call over, like, Mom, Dad, uh look at me. It's the slow one. <laughs> and then I go down the slide, but that's been, that's been the story of, of this too, is going, there's, there's too much that I don't know. 
There's uh, too much that'll be misunderstood. There's so I feel like this kid sitting at the top of the slide and just like the kid waiting to jump in the rope, right? It could be slow to to getting in and, and doing the thing. And this podcast, why I say that is this podcast will develop over time, which you're probably fine with, but I have been less fine with. I've redesigned like the cover art or or thought through this episode so many times because I just, it's like I imagine that it could somehow be perfect when there's probably 10 things I've said already that I'll regret saying you know, two weeks from now. And so it's more about just going down the slide, getting in the water and let's do this thing than anything else. So, okay. Hey, look at me. I'm, I'm pretty slow to the game here. I am, but I'm actually getting in the pool and we're going for it. And then the third thing is that I just want to say, I'm going to experiment with this because there's a lot of things I want to try. So sometimes I might really work on the production value of something because since as long as I can remember, I've cared about shows and aesthetics and presentation, but there's other times where because of that, I want to be bright more than I want to be shiny factor. I want to press into that. Like, let's just press into some authenticity, some sitting in some things, some, uh, just, okay. I, I like, this might just be a very raw moment or, or like I might say something and then have to kind of redact or go back and be like, okay, well, here's kind of what I actually meant. And so it's, there will be moments where I'm trying to, um, have some elements of aesthetic and, and work on like all of those things. But there's going to be a lot because over, over all of that, I value meaningful conversation and, I want to bring the conversations in those directions. And so that's even why I've opted for long form uh, in a world that seems to like, like snack size. And we'll release little bits of these podcasts on Instagram reels and TikTok and YouTube shorts, all the things there's a full video on YouTube. But at the same time, the, the thing that I'm holding near and dear to like my heart and the, the vision for this thing is conversations that are impactful and meaningful and sit in stuff and don't have just this polished, here's your next, I don't know, five steps to figure out how you're going to be healthy, wealthy, wise, all that stuff. Okay. As I've already said, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know. I I did jot down two things that I feel uh, really resonate with me at the moment. The first is that our internal world matters so much and our internal world informs how we see things. And so I really enjoy the, the, the times where I get the most life out of podcasting is when I'm talking to someone and I can feel their variety and I can sense their personality and they're telling me stories where things are, are just bubbling to the surface where I'm going, Oh man, like we're just, there's a level of connection here that it's just so precious and it's, uh, it's beautiful to see someone's humanity kind of come out and them get to share things. And there's just this good back and forth that can happen. And so uh, because our internal world matters so much, like that's going to inform this show. That's what undercurrents is all about getting at and driving at those things. And the second thing is that I really believe that we all need growth mechanisms. This is going to be my growth mechanism. There was a, a time a while back where I would have described myself as creative or as a communicator. And those things were baked into my schedule. They just happened naturally. And I didn't even have to think about it. And then when you go through life stuff, you go, yeah, I'm a creative. Yeah. I like I, whatever the thing is for you. Right. But then you look at your schedule and you go, Oh no, I haven't done that thing in a long time. So if one of your core values, if one of the things you care deeply about is growth, my question is, what do you have built in that is a growth mechanism for you consistently? And so for me, that's going to be this podcast. But at the same time, I'm not looking to be selfish with this thing. I'm going to try to have as many conversations with people as as possible. Like if you want to talk about this stuff, if the questions I read early ma- earlier matter to you, if one of the conversations that you'll hear in this thread you care about, I want to hear like whatever... Uh, it brings to the surface because this, again, it's, I think we all need growth mechanisms. This is mine, but it's not just mine. It's ours. If you want to share it with me. So you can submit questions through comments. You can DM me on 
uh, on Instagram. If you have my phone number, you can text me and let's just keep the conversation going and let's grow together. And who knows wh what that develops into down the road, but it's going to start with undercurrents as, as a podcast. So if we're going to share this, I would hope that you would show up hyper curious, that you would show up with questions and that you would show up anticipating that you might learn something. Let's lean into creativity. Let's lean into question asking and let's lean into thinking we have more to learn. I promise that I will do the same. I'm going to show up hyper curious. I'm going to show up with my questions and I, I want to learn. It's a growth mechanism. So this is, this is that outlet. Whew. All right. I'm looking at my notes here and trying to decide where I want to go. I think there's been a lot of shifting and a lot of change for me personally. There is there is something really beautiful that has been birthed out of that. And the way that I say it is that when you have your life shaken, built into that is an invitation. And so the invitation is if you can see it, and I, it it's taken me a long time to see this, but there's new opportunity, there's bigger perspective than what it, what it previously was. Uh, you learn maybe more how to stand on your own, or at least some of what's happened to me has, has taught me that. And uh, that does inform the type of guests that I'm going to have on, the topics that I want to cover, much of where we're going to go. So I have questions that are that are guiding this podcast and then I have a set of of values. I have a set of things that matter immensely and will will carry us into into the the upcoming episodes and I want to read some of those to you. Core values have become really important to me, personal core values. You'll hear some some episodes where we we definitely cover that. We probably won't stay there forever, but that has been one of the main helpful things for me over the last few years. And so the first two actually use the word values in them. So the first is that values are the key to clarity. So you establish personal core values and that's what can help you take those steps towards positive change in your life. That sort of sets the compass, sets the direction. And uh, it's, again, with the title undercurrents, it would make sense that we would go as far as we know to go into the root of things. And right now, at least, I believe you knowing the values that you have are one of the the best things you can do for yourself and for your personal growth. The second thing is that values dismantle aimlessness. So if you're sensing lack of direction, then you start to set your course with intention. Instead of waiting for something to hit you, you decide that you're going to take the first step and say, this is the stuff that's going to matter the most to me. And you prove that to yourself over time, uh, I, I believe. And I'm still in process with that, but I've seen some of the, the, the gold that can come there. Three is that everyone has a mental model that they live from. And with undercurrents, what I'm challenging myself to do and what I want us to do is I want us to choose intentionally. So what I mean there is, Instead of coming at things from comparison or guilt, like I should do this or they're doing this, maybe I need to, or projection, like this is what would look right to people, uh, we're going to to choose with intention based on our, our circumstance and our situation, like this is the mental model that would be healthiest, would be the most wise, would be the most loving, like we want to bring those things and, and think about that stuff intentionally and, and build a lens instead of just inherit one and, and never question it. All right. A uh, few more here. Intentionality is a life posture. It's not a one-time decision. So we go through these patches of life where it feels hyper-intentional. And then we go through other times where we feel like life has us and it's just pushing us through the roller coaster and putting us through the ringer. And so I, I think having some sort of, I like the idea of a growth mechanism because also when you think of it, it's imagining that that is consistent, right? So that consistency of, of saying, I want to live intentionally, what's going to push me back into the intentional rhythms that I know are best for me. 
that's, that's what I mean by that one. That intentionality is actually like this life posture. Sometimes you start to, if you've sat, like I'm sitting at my desk right now. And if I, if I sit here long enough, I start to hunch over and I realize how bad my back posture is. And I kind of have to, Oh, oops. Okay. I was slipping. Like, let me sit up straight again. And, and that's something we're going to focus on is that, that intentionality that we would have. Let me fly through uh, the next one. The best way to live is open-handed. So unlearning is just as crucial as learning. There's no sacred cows. There's no, this is off limits. Uh, we, we're actually going to play offense with getting new information, with trying to lean into uh, uh, stuff we haven't been exposed to before. I've said this for a long time, years and years now. I think I, I well, I know I did. I wrote this for a message I gave at a church and it stuck with me and I, I've continued to really love this as a phrase, but courage today, boldness tomorrow, confidence someday. So we don't get to the confidence that we desire without going through courage. And so much of that shininess that we see in other people, it one, it could be projected confidence. Like maybe they're doing it, but they're doing it scared because you hear that story a lot. Two, a lot of the confident people you see, you kind of go, oh, they kind of put a bad taste in my mouth because like they shouldn't be that confident, right? So living from this place of courage and just saying, okay, I know there's things I should do, no things that I want to do, courage today, and then boldness tomorrow, meaning if I do this today, it will give me some boldness. Like I'm proving to myself I can do it. And I actually think that that in boldness is, or, or sorry, I then think confidence is just boldness repeated time and time again. It's confidence is it's coming because you've gone through courage because you've gone through boldness. So you'll hear me say that quite a bit. I don't need to go into the next one because I've talked about it a bunch, but you're going to hear me say bright, not shiny. Uh, so that, yeah, in a world of plastic perfection, I said, be genuine and, you know, be that sort of bright light that we need. I got three more. Paying attention is going to be more important than getting attention. So we want to truly see people in these conversations. Just be present. Don't fly through them. That's part of the format is wanting to sit in certain things. Another, another one here. We don't take a hard stance on things that are unknowable and invisible. That's I said that in my questions too, right? Uh, why do we so often do that? I Here, I'm going... Instead of actively looking for how we're uh, we're different, we want to look for how we're the same. And so we don't build walls with our beliefs or our mental models. We're looking for ways to be in harmony with each other. And the last one here, I want to fall in love with ambiguity, with unlearning, with unlearning and wrestling from the gray. And I have this uh, image in my head where I'm going, we, we would have the posture of students, we would have the wonder of children, and we would experience things like we're experiencing it for the first time. Posture of a student, meaning I'm coming into this expecting that I'm going to learn, expecting that there's something that uh, I could, I, I might be able to take away. And I, I'm meaning this for myself when I write this down. I'm not saying you need to come to this podcast with like, yeah, I just, that's in my opinion, that's the best way to live. Just like never outgrow how you showed up to, whatever your favorite class was in high school or college, like that, that anticipation to learn a subject. I want, I just want to carry that through life. Cause there's something about that posture. That's intriguing to me. Wonder of a child, meaning I think the last two kind of fit together, the wonder of a child. And then the awe of, of someone experiencing someone for something for the first time where you could imagine a kid at Disney world or uh, going to a new country for the first time and all the sights and all the sounds are brand new. If you've ever been placed in a moment like that, it can happen in adulthood. I think it just happens less, but that is a huge priority to, to me is that, that sense of, of wonder and awe. I was actually recently, I met some, some, uh, new friends and was on a trip in, in Florida for, for work and someone said like they would love to make a meal for me because I have like a very expressive. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, you've probably already seen me make some weird facial expressions, but I get super excited over things that other people might not get excited about. And I've told my wife before, I just hope I never lose that. I I want to be in awe of how insanely weird this life that we're living is. And I want to have wonder for 
everything and just what what is this because life is that it's it just it's so big and weird and mysterious and beautiful and it's all happening right now and i don't want to miss it so posture of a student wonder of a child awe of someone that's experiencing something for the first time so what i imagine as we wrap up this first episode is we pack our bags we have questions that we're sort of stuffing in there. I do that every morning before I go to a coffee shop. I like get my laptop, I get my book that I'm reading, my journal, whatever it is, and I just kind of get it all collected. So sort of the same thing. We're leaving what we're used to. We're gonna actively try to explore the undercurrents, what's underneath this stuff, what matters most to us. We're gonna have a growth mechanism. We're gonna lean into all of that. I don't know where it's gonna lead, I would be so thrilled if you would go on this journey with me. If this episode or future episodes impact you and you'd want to share it, of course I would love that. You're going to be able to listen on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get podcasts. Uh, I'm excited that I'm going full in on YouTube as well so you can watch these videos. And I think Spotify now has a feature I'm going to mess with too where if you want to submit questions, you can do it there. But like I said, on social you'll you can connect with us undercurrents podcast is i grabbed that on tiktok on instagram so uh on youtube you'll be able to connect uh undercurrents podcast and then my personal instagram is benji block and will be open to conversations around this stuff uh cuz it matters to me and that's why i'm i'm doing this that's why we're launching this thing And when I say we, I mean me, (laughs) but I do hope you stick around. Okay. That's it for this first episode of undercurrents. Cheers, friends.